proteins. How much protein do you actually need? Well, let's just backtrack. Number one, if you want to be healthy, you have to have a variety of foods in your diet of plant origin, and that will supply phytochemicals, right? That was the one point. Second point, now we're going to deal with the bulk dietary foods in what we are eating. Number one, proteins. How much protein do I need? Well, the World Health Organization, the United Nations Universe, uh, University, and the FAO say that adults need 0.75 grams per kilogram per day. Now, that's very little. I know that you work in pounds, so it's about 2.4 pounds to the kilogram, if I am correct there. And uh, you can work it out how much you actually need. You need very, very little protein. But mankind actually consumes vast quantities of protein. And anything that you consume more than you need becomes a problem. I'll tell you why. Because protein contains nitrogen. And when you break down a protein, you build it into your body as your own proteins. That's fine. But if you eat more protein than your body needs, you cannot store it. We cannot store protein. We can only store fats and carbohydrates. So we would have to change the protein we eat into a fat or a carbohydrate. That means we have to split out the nitrogen, and it gets split out as ammonia, which is toxic, and we convert it to urea, and we have to get rid of that through the kidneys. But it's a toxic substance. And if we have too much protein in the diet, that means we put a toxic load on our system. So better not to eat too much protein and rather eat more carbohydrate. Now, what does the world teach you? That if you have a lot of carbohydrate, you're going to get what? Fats. Is that true? Or is it not true? In actual fact, it's not true. If you eat refined carbohydrate, you're going to get fats. But if you eat whole food carbohydrate, you will not get fat. All right. Let me make an analogy. A car is built of iron. Is that right? The engine block is built of iron, and the chassis is built of iron. The whole car is built of iron. So the obvious fuel for the car to run would be iron. So that's why you fill up your tank with iron filings. Is that correct? No. What do you fill up your tank with? With gasoline. With gasoline. Because you're going to burn that. Now the same applies to the human body. The human body, the structural component is protein. So you're built up largely of protein. Now you don't want to run on protein. You want to run on carbohydrate. That's the fuel of the body. And when you burn the fuel in the body, you produce carbon dioxide and water. The water is useful to you. The carbon dioxide, you go, and it's gone. Right? Whereas if you burn protein, you get all these accumulated toxins in your body, these harmful compounds. Your ammonia, has to be converted to urea. That may not get too high a concentration or else you will die. The sulfur in the protein has to be built out. That creates sulfate, sulfuric acid. So you're creating an acid system. You have to neutralize that by releasing calcium from the bone. You are creating problem after problem by eating too much protein. Whereas if you eat carbohydrates as fuel, you don't have that problem. If you eat refined carbohydrates, you have a problem, as we will see in a moment. So which, plant, which proteins are better, plant proteins or animal proteins? Which one do you think? Well, you see, when I first started doing research on this, I applied for a research grant to show that there was a difference between plant and animal proteins in terms of their effectiveness. And guess what? They turned down my request because they said a protein is a protein is a protein doesn't matter what you eat. It won't have an effect. When you digest it, you'll get amino acids and you make whatever you want out of that. And I argued, no, it's not like that because 
the ratio of amino acids in a plant is going to be different to the ratio of amino acids in an animal, but they didn't buy that. And so by some chance, we managed to get into a research project where we could actually test this and prove it and go back to the research committees and say, <laughs> and then they started funding it. That was fun. And today, this is common knowledge. Here's an article in the American Journal of Cl Clinical Nutrition. A high ratio of dietary animal to vegetable protein increases the rate of bone loss and the risk of fracture in postmenopausal women. Women in the highest quintile of ratio of animal to vegetable protein had nearly fourfold greater risk of fracture compared with women with low ratios. Independent of other risk factors, including age, calcium intake, weight, estrogen use, smoking, alcohol use, and total protein intake. So if you were to consume animal proteins, you were at least four times as bad off as when you were consuming plant proteins. Now, this publication came out in 2001. We actually started this a lot earlier. Why? Because certain amino acids, for example, are rich in sulfur, like this one over here, cysteine and methionine. And if you have lots of those, and animal proteins have a lot of those, you place a tremendous acid load on the system. You see, plant proteins contain more branched-chain amino acids than do animal proteins, and they are easier to digest than animal proteins. If you have branch chains on your amino acids, then your protein is nice and loose. It's globular. If you have non branch chains, you have a very compact protein. And in order to digest that compact protein, you have to punch it out. So you have to create a far more acid system in your stomach, for example, in order to do that, to unwind that protein so that your enzyme can start cutting it up. So, for example... If you had to have a diet high in protein but plant proteins, the pH in your stomach would never go lower than 4.5. If you put an egg in your stomach, it drops to 1.5. That's battery acid. Do you know that American society and Western society in general, their favorite product to buy and the number one product to buy is an antacid? Isn't that right? Don't they advertise antacids on your TV from morning till night? Absolutely. Why? Show me the animal out there in the world, an elephant or a gazelle or any one of them with a bottle of antacid tied to its back. <laughs> There's only one creature that does that, and that's us. Maybe we're putting the wrong thing inside so that we produce all that acid. Maybe we should never do it. So... Plant proteins have very high levels of an amino acid called arginine and glycine in the blood than do animal proteins. And these levels are associated with protecting against clogging of arteries, for example. So we did a little test, and we fed rabbits on diets which contain equal amounts of protein. The one group contained an 18% protein ration derived from soya, and the other one from casein. Now, what is casein? Casein is the protein you find in dairy products. So you'll have it in cheese and in milk and in all of those. And look, when they were fed soya, they had high levels of arginine. When they fed casein, they had low levels of arginine. Now, arginine is your detox amino acid. It helps you to get rid of the excess nitrogen. You want lots of arginine in your diet, and you only get it from plant foods. Glycine is the other one you want high. Soya gave a high glycine, and milk solids gave a low glycine at the same protein level. In fact, rabbits that were fed animal proteins develop arteriosclerosis. And they have elevated cholesterol, even if their diet doesn't contain any cholesterol. And by just giving them a little bit of plant proteins, you improve the situation. So vegetable proteins lowers uh, cholesterol and raises it if you have animal proteins. There's the difference. Plant-based proteins 
animal-based proteins, and you see a vast difference in cholesterol levels between the two groups. So overall, the healthier protein to take is plant protein. I'll just run through this quickly before we go to the next category. The 10 animal proteins that cause high cholesterol in rabbits, there's plant protein, doesn't cause high cholesterol. Egg white, pork, chicken, beef, fish, whole egg, casein, turkey, skim milk, and egg yolk. So obviously, the animal proteins were the problem. <laughs> and plant proteins were much, much lower. When we look at the 10 plant proteins that cause low cholesterol, you'll see something interesting. None of them are really very high. That's the average animal protein. But look at this. Beans, faber beans and peas, are very cholesterol-reducing. So if you have a high cholesterol level, what is the best thing you can do to lower it? Eat some beans. It's in fact better even than some prescription drugs. 